Howdy partner. So you want to learn how to change out a hard to reach kitchen faucet? Well you're in luck. I'm going to show you today. Today we're going to change out this strange looking kitchen faucet as well as this beat up soap dispenser with uh, something that looks a lot nicer to go with the rest of the renovated kitchen. So um, looking forward to showing you how it is to uh, get to this because it's kind of hard. We'll show you from underneath and uh, walk you through the process. So let's get started. So if you're anything like me, this is what normally you have under here. So we want to clear that out so that we have some room to work. There we go. Much better area to work from. As you can see, there are a lot of obstructions under here between the piping, the wiring, garbage disposal, dishwasher. And then as you work your way up, you see that's the main faucet and that's the soap dispenser. And then they actually have extensions because it's such a long run to this corner of the wall here. The first thing you're going to want to do is turn off the water, both to the hot water line. This other line coming off is for a dishwasher that can remain connected, but you just want to turn off that knob. And then also turn off a knob to the cold water. Once that's done, then you can go up and unscrew the soap reservoir. Now that the soap reservoir has been removed, you want to go ahead and put down a cup to catch the soap drips or water drips. Um, you might need a couple. And then we're going to go ahead and undo these uh, extensions on the faucet lines. That way we can unscrew the faucet from the top. To undo the faucet or the uh, water line extensions, we're just going to use an adjustable wrench. And this one is a 16 millimeter uh, wrench. Now have a cup handy because you will catch some water uh, falling out of those lines once it's done. If the water is rushing out, it means you probably didn't turn off that valve fully in the back or you have a bad valve, which means you need to turn off the main water line. Now we've got both the water lines to the faucet disconnected, as well as the soap dispenser. So it's time to start to try to work from the top. When you change out these faucets, there's a number of different types of faucet wrenches you can get because I'll show you, you know, you got some issues uh, like we were looking at with the, the sink and the pipes and everything else under there is kind of tight. So you can't get a normal wrench in there. This is what's called a basin wrench. This is one tool you could use. I happen to have it. This top spins. And it's reversible and basically as this opens it'll clamp the nut from underneath and you can use it to tighten or loosen uh, the faucet. They have a number of other tools that may be better for this job but something like this will work when you really can't get in there with a normal set of wrenches or pliers. At the top here you can usually just pull up the soap dispenser like that Then, if we're lucky we can unscrew from the top. We probably won't be able to. We'll probably have to go underneath but we can try to do that a little bit um, it's soapy, so I'm going to have to dry it off. Same with this. We can try to turn it and unsnug it. Uh, it may turn, or we may have to go underneath and grab with the wrench. Lucky for me, it's looking like with a towel and a little bit of work, we're going to be able to unscrew both the soap dispenser as well as the faucet from the top without having to grab it underneath. Some of that goo you see there is probably dried soap, maybe some plumber's putty. Now the nut's catching, we can go underneath and grab that. For the faucet, and try to do the same and there we go we're gonna be able to take it out so from underneath you see the original nut that was holding it on still attached we had actually kind of taken apart the faucet and taken out that sleeve so we'll be able to get those water lines through pull that out and then this is just a simple plastic nut they're just going to lay down and unscrew by hand so we've worked off the bottom pieces now we're free. We have our faucet hole as well as our soap hole. So let's clean those up and get started on the new one. Here we have our new soap dispenser as well as our new sink faucet. We'll go ahead and put those together according to manufacturer's instructions with threading it and everything. This one is unique because instead of having a uh, container, it actually has a hose that goes straight into the uh, bottle of soap. So hopefully that works. It should be a lot easier than having to refill it. We got the faucet and the soap dispenser assembled according to manufacturer's instructions. There's a small O-ring as well as a washer on a soap dispenser that you can use in lieu of the uh, plumber's putty if you choose. According to manufacturer, they prefer you just use that. So that's what I'm going to do today. There was also some pretty stubborn uh, calcium deposits and other stains around there. I was able to scrape off carefully with a razor blade. If you tried a couple cleaning chemicals that didn't work. So now what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and lift them and get them set into their holes and then we'll go underneath and uh, take a look at it. I'd like to start by installing the soap dispenser. It's only got a plastic 
nut as well as a rubber o-ring so you can pretty much get it hand tight on there and there's no water pressure or anything so as long as it's nice and tight it doesn't wiggle on top or the bottom it should be fine to just do by hand now for the uh, faucet we're absolutely, we're absolutely gonna have to tighten it down with a wrench it's gonna be a very similar process for attaching the faucet you're gonna have a rubber washer but a brass uh, nut that you can start by hand and get up there nice and tight now as you can see there's no room in here to really get any leverage with a wrench that's why we're gonna use that special basin wrench as you start to snug it down if you had uh, help someone else on the top could make sure that it's pointing straight you're gonna have to get in and out to make sure you have everything lined up properly as you start to tighten it down so before you hit it with a wrench get out and look at it um, my production team is off working on getting ready for another shoot so they are not here to help but uh, if you do have somebody out there they can go ahead and help you uh, make sure you're lined up properly so you want to make sure that the head of your wrench is at the proper orientation because it will only turn and lock one way and then you want to fix the bottom piece to say if you want it left or right and as you hold that up there you may need two hands go ahead and turn it until it's nice and snug once you start to get it tightened from underneath you can come up and see if you're not quite straight you can apply some leverage and try to tighten it this way and then see how good it is once you're properly tight you should be able to spin your faucet if it turns and turn it without any movement in the base now you need to reconnect your water lines if they have the extensions to the extension otherwise straight to the wall um, you could have marked your lines you can remember which one was the cold and which one was the hot and then obviously the blue will go in the cold and the red will go in the hot um, apply some fresh teflon tape to your connection which will help it to uh, be more watertight and then this was the orientation that we end up choosing for tightening down the top now that the water lines are reconnected you want to open up the valve so you can come down here and you go ahead and slowly turn on your hot water and your cold water you want to open the valve so the air gets out see here you've dried everything off so we're going to check for leaks and uh, open the valves check for leaks one easy way to do it is these are cold sometimes it might feel wet even though it's not they're good and dry and you touch them after it's on and you can look at your hands and see if you see any water on them and if you don't then you're probably pretty dry you also want to check up here and make sure there's no water coming off your connections to the faucet which there's not no water on these connections and nothing on the valves so we're good and dry All right, well, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Mr. Greg's How To. I hope that you enjoyed uh, learning how to install a new uh, hard to reach kitchen faucet and soap dispenser. I've got another few videos coming out soon, so please uh, like, comment, subscribe. Um, you know, this project uh, wasn't that difficult. If I can do it, you can too. So, thanks for watching.